Good morning. Please stand for our opening hymn, Christ, One of Glory Fills the Sky, found in your blue hymnal, page number seven. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Let us say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who calls all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and in inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of the everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. Good morning, all saints. Good morning. The first lesson is from the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verses 1 through verse 2. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be doubled. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wing. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The psalm for this morning is 98, verses 1 through 10, which we shall read in unison. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right. Has he won for himself the victory? The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has He is members of mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all ye lands. Lift your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy, O King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the land and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when comes the judge of the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. The second lesson is taken from 2 Thessalonians, 
chapter 3, verses 6 to 13. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. To keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command, anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for our sequence hymn, Lord of All Hopefulness, found in your blue hymnal, page 482.
under another, upon another, all will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first. But the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you the words and the wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your soul. The gospel of the Lord. Okay. Did any of the same guys come in? Yeah, we're going to have to make you today. Okay. All the words are the same. Okay, good. Because of the last question, I'm going to hear you. I'm going to talk about that thing. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. We magnify your name and we worship you. Lord, we acknowledge our sins and we humbly repent. And despite our sin, you still love us. Forgive us and help us to turn away from them, to live a life that is pleasing to you. We are thankful and grateful for all your blessings grace and mercy and all that you have done for us. Now, dear Heavenly Father, open our hearts and our minds and our hearing to welcome your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's reflection is titled Perseverance Through Chaos. Perseverance Through Chaos. To summarize today's gospel and highlights, it is telling us that before the end is chaos. And in Luke chapter 12, sorry, 21, verses 5 to 19, Jesus is simply pastoring his disciples and others by giving hints of what the chaos before the end will look like. And in doing so, he gave them pointers for living in the midst of chaos in a way that will keep their thoughts focused on how to enter the kingdom of heaven and their hearts focus on him. So there are five points of chaos to which the gospel referenced. The chaos of the destruction of religious freedom.
the chaos of the destruction of religious freedom, the chaos of false messiahs, the chaos of war, the chaos of natural disaster, and the chaos of persecution. As we read and examine these elements of chaos and our focus should be on the tools Jesus is given to cope, manage, and to get through the chaos, even the chaos in our lives. And not on going to a stark craze about preparing for this chaos. In the first reference to chaos, which is the chaos of the destruction of religious freedom. Some of the Jesus' disciples and people were remarking about the appearance and the magnificence, the grandeur and the majestic stonework of the temple and how it was adorned with beautiful gifts, decorations that were dedicated to God. But Jesus said in verse six, the time is coming when all these things will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Instead of engaging in a conversation over the beauty of the temple, Jesus turns to his disciples' attention to the truth that nothing on this earth is meant to last forever. We have no hope in anything we can build here on this earth. It will all pass away someday. It will all be brought to ruin. It's inevitable. We are not invincible, and neither are the kingdoms that we seek to build here. So our focus should not be on the material things. Jesus is simply and pastorally explaining that as the end of the world draws near, believers should expect to experience the chaos of the destruction of religious freedom. But in the midst of the chaos of the destruction of religious freedom, we must direct our thinking on preparing ourselves for entry into the kingdom of heaven and our hearts focus on Christ. After Jesus dropped this major prophetic bomb regarding the pending doom and destruction of the magnificent temple and the destruction of religious freedom, his disciples asked him, teacher, when will all these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? In his response, it took us into the second reference, which is the chaos of false messiah. Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and saying the time has come, but don't believe them. In other words, there will be false messiahs, false teachers, false prophets, and wolves in sheep clothing seeking to draw the flock away from the fellowship of Christ. Jesus instructed his disciples not to be led astray and not to go with them. Instead, Keep your focus on me and entering the kingdom of heaven. In modern times today, that would be when we talk about the false prophets, that would be priests, pastors, and bishops. There are many false messiahs, false prophets, false teachers and wolves that have sought to lead God's people astray. And some of us can remember folks like Jim Jones, David Koresh, and Harold Campin were our 20th century false messiahs. The same warning that Jesus gives us here can be found in Matthew chapter 24, verses four to five, and Mark 13, five to six, which reads nearly word for word, the same as verse seven to eight of Luke chapter 21. Then in second Peter 
chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, tells us that there will be false teachers among you. In 1 John, chapter 2, 18 to 19, tells us that as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. In 1 John, again, the chapter, in chapter 4, verses 1 to 6, tells us, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone into the world. The point is that before the end comes Jesus and Jesus returns, we will experience the chaos of false messiahs and they should not lead you or us astray. And we should not follow them. In the midst of the chaos of these false messiahs, what should we do? We must keep our focus on preparing ourselves to enter the kingdom of heaven and our hearts uh, focus on Christ. Now let's look at the third reference, which is the chaos of war. As if the chaos of the destruction of religious freedom and the chaos of false messiahs were not enough to dash our hopes in the kingdoms of this earth, Jesus continues to drill his listeners with the truth that before the end comes and he returns, there will be much more chaos than he says. When we hear of wars and insurrections, look no further because it's happening here. One occurred here in the United States as recent as January 6, 2021. However, Jesus instructs not to panic or be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he added, nations will go to war against nations. Look what's happening with Ukraine and Russia and kingdoms against kingdoms. Jesus here in his own pastoral wisdom instruct his followers not to be terrified and not to live in fear and not to think that the end of the world is at hand, but to instead recognize that part of God's total redemption of the world is the continuing chaos of war. We can know for sure that Christ reigns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and that as he establishes his perfect kingdom, we can keep our eyes focused on him as the object of our hope in the midst of this chaos of war. So in this whole midst of chaos of war, again, we must keep our focus on preparing ourselves for the entry into the kingdom of heaven and our hearts focus on Christ. Now to the fourth reference of chaos of natural disasters. Let us think for a moment about these chaos associated with natural disasters. We often hear in the news of floodings, hurricanes, wild forest fires. There will be great earthquakes and there will be famines and plagues. We just recently came through a pandemic. In various places, terrifying things and fearful events and great miraculous signs from heaven. This imagery that Jesus invokes here brings us through our, our thoughts of fire falling from heaven as God releases his judgment and the entire cosmos falls into complete despair. The chaos of natural disaster is something that must happen before the end comes and Christ returns. And it's, simply, and it's simply more evidence that there's something broken in the world. Something that isn't right, something that we can't fix. It's also as though the world is on a collision course and an awful destiny. And again, this is a reminder that the world we live in 
and it's irreparable, irreparable, broken because of the effects of sin, greed, and the quest for power. as we are broken people have hope in making things right have hope in making things right but christ calls us to remain steadfastly focused upon him as our savior who is the hope of heaven in the midst of the chaos of natural disaster during these times we must have a laser-like focus on preparing for our entry into the kingdom of heaven and our hearts focus on Christ. Now let's turn our attention to the, re to the reference which was made to chaos of perse persecution. Throughout the last seven verses, Jesus explains that the disciples will face the chaos of persecution. In the midst of, the, of, in the midst of this all, Jesus urged his followers to trust the Holy Spirit, to help them give an answer for the hope of the gospel and the gentleness and respect, because even though some of them would be put to death, the hope of heaven, that they could cling to it, that they would be kept safe through fiery trials to endure the chaos of persecution and come out on the other side unbroken in the presence of Christ. Jesus put it this way, but before all this occurs, there will be a time of great persecution. You will be dragged into synagogues and prisons and you will stand trial before kings and governors because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. So don't worry in advance about how to answer the charges against you, for I will give you the right words and such wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to reply or refute you. Even those closest to you, your parents, brothers, relatives, and friends will betray you. They will even kill some of you and everyone will hate you because you are my follower. But not a hair on, of your head will perish. By standing firm, you will win your souls. However, if you follow Christ, then you can expect the face of chaos of persecution from our religious folks and secular governments, and also some of your closest relatives and friends. So in other words, even though you may be doing right, expect persecution. But you can take heart in the fact that just like the disciples, the Holy Spirit will give you the courage in the face of the chaos of persecution and the ability to speak the truth of the gospel wisely and as you suffer you can cling to christ who is your hope of heaven again we must keep our focus on preparing ourselves to enter the kingdom of heaven folks the scriptures as were foretold are coming to pass currently there's a war between russia and ukraine and that has the world's attention. And not to overlook the wars that are taking place in the Middle East and in some African countries. And if we are hearing what Jesus is saying to us, we will not panic. Or be so preoccupied with our own future and our own tragic demise. When we do that, we would miss the whole point of this biblical story. So let us not be selfish and put away some things or those things that cause us to focus on ourselves and only ourselves and discover what Jesus has to say. 
the point of today's gospel is even though the early Christians went through these horrible persecutions for their faith, we are still gathering in the name of Jesus Christ today. Those persecuted Christians still told the story of Jesus. Were there people out there telling others that the end of the world was coming? Of course. And it did not matter. Jesus told them to share the good news anyway. And they did. And because they did, we know Jesus. Was the temple in ruins? Were there wars and earthquakes? And did they appear to be occurring more regularly? Yes. But it did not matter. Jesus told his listeners that the end will not follow immediately. More importantly, Jesus told them that tough times, which will be your life challenges, are an opportunity to find God. This is not the time to give up and the, and the disciples listen. And because they did, we know Jesus. All of us have come to faith because someone in our past did not decide to throw in the towel and hide in their Armageddon shelter after hearing about chaos. You are here because someone in your past path has endured through the tough times relying on God and found that relationship and that experience with God so moving and so important that they just had to share it with you. You and your faith are the beneficiaries of persecution and death. You and your faith are the beneficiaries of others' struggles. You are the dividends of others or other people's endurance. And you are invited to be a part of the same story. Today's gospel is not about us or is not about me. It is not about your tragic demise of the world, cataclysm, but it is about our struggles. It is about our reach and search to find God and to trust Jesus in our struggles. And it's about God giving us the opportunity to share the joys and wonders of faith etched into us through endurance. Who are your beneficiaries? How will you make sure that God's story does not end with us? What is your story going to be? What are your or what are you going to share? What will you or what will be your testimony? Do not worry. Jesus says about what you will testify. Simply trust him. Keep an eye out for God's action in the world and in people's lives and wait for Jesus to give you the word. Make up your mind not to prepare your defense in advance. Jesus says, for I will give you words. Have you experienced chaos in your life? Have you experienced chaos in the world around us? Have you experienced the fear involved with thinking about the end? Have you lived in the frustration of watching the world around us crumble? Have you faced the uncertainty of discerning truth from lies? Have you experienced the pain of persecution because of your faith? I am sure you can all answer those questions and to reflect on them. My hope then is that this reflection from today's gospel will arm us with tools necessary to address the chaos in our lives rather than throwing in the towel and giving up on life. And my hope is that this reflection shows that you are not the only one with chaos in your life. There will always be chaos in life. 
always. But life is all about what we do to get through the chaos. And that can only occur with Christ in our lives. Amen. We look for the life of the prayers of the people to be found on page seven in the bulletin. We lift our voices in unison to recite our mission statement so that these words will be constant reminder of our purpose in the community. At all saints, we are called to be stewards of Christ's ministry and strengthening our faith, serving the community, and spreading his love on all fair Knowing that a mother does not desert her children, let us turn to God. Asking God to embrace with loving kindness all those whose lives are troubled and afflicted by human evil. Let us beg God not to delay, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. God of Jesus Christ, even in our own day, many are handed over to injustice and persecution. Many suffer want and hunger. Come to rule the earth with justice and delay not in sending your transforming love. God of Jesus Christ, even in our own day, many families are torn apart by internal strife. Sisters and brothers reach out to one another with hating, hating hands. People and nations are divided by anger. Delay not with your peace. God of Jesus Christ, even in our own day, children are not spared, but are apprenticed to hatred, rejected by their own parents, forbidden even life itself. Delay not with your motherly affection. God of Jesus Christ, even in our own day, the followers of your child promise are separated by prejudice and bitter division. Delay not in making us into one people. God of Jesus Christ, even in our own day, many find contempt and rejection within your church. Delay not in bringing the harmony of love to your chosen. God of Jesus Christ, we pray for all the oppressed, all the needy, and all the sick. 
especially. Stephen, Charles, Crystal, Lipso, David, Eden, Emmett, Eric, Janice, Jenny, Jeanette, Joyce, Jamar, Juanita, Gat, Blake, Lenore, Lorian, Marcus R, Martha, Monty, Mylia, Nicole, Patrick, Ruby, Sally, Sean, Shirley, Tammy, Walter, Wendell. Delay not in bringing the harmony of love to your chosen. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, Moises, Bishop of the Dominican Republic, Elizabeth, Donald and Craig, Bishops of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, St. George, St. George's, Milford, Divine Providence, Dominican Republic, and for all the clergy and people, delay not your peace with your peace. For those celebrating birthday this week, especially Matthew, Lorient, and Victoria, delay, delay not in bringing the harmony of love to your chosen. <laughs> you may now offer your own intercession at this time. Okay. Lord, we pray for those who are experiencing challenges in their lives. Give them hope. Touch them and comfort them. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, for the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh, compassionate God, in Jesus, your child of promise, we know and await the life and the peace of which you have assured us. We look forward and longing, hoping for ourselves and for those whom we have remembered. In the name of the same child who lives with you and in the communion of the Holy Spirit forever and ever, amen. We're preparing to go into our offertory. For those of you that are joining us online, you can go to allsaintsdetroit.org, click on the giving tab and make your select tithes and offerings. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary, we, you can walk around and come up and place your offering unto God into the plate. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. And we can sing together as we prepare our gifts. Great is thy faithfulness found in Lift Every Voice hymnal number 189. Thank you. 
And now as our savior has taught us, we are bold to sing. Join me and sing together the words our savior taught us as perfect.
be seated for the welcome and announcements. Good afternoon, All Saints. It is indeed uh, another good Sunday with one little wrinkle, and that is, it's a little too cold for me, and I'm sure for all of us. But I hope that your presence here um, with your warm hearts, worshiping God certainly is bringing some heat to us. My name is Roger Weeks and I'm the junior warden in the absence of our senior warden. And we all, I like to ask you to continue to pray for her recovery. Um, I wanna welcome all of you here at All Saints, even those who are on the various platforms, Zoom, Facebook, welcome. I hope today's service was inspiring and I hope you'll join us next Sunday. And for those who are here, we're glad that you're able to make it out through this, out in this cold. Um, I noticed that yesterday, I don't know if it happened in your area, but it snowed. And I think that that's the, the first snowfall that we, that we have for the upcoming winter. I would like to turn your attention to, oh, and by the way, I welcome all of you. I'd like to turn your attention to um, page 12 in the bulletin to bring your attention to a couple of announcements. And that is, uh, we wanna thank all of you who volunteered their time and talent on Tuesday, which was the, um, the general election day. It was on November 8th. Um, there were some of you who turned out and we really, really express our thanks for your um, your service and your help. Stewardship ministry and annual or annual stewardship ministry begins today and will continue on no, November 20th with our annual ministry fair following the service. All ministries of the parish will have a table with information on how each of us can use our time and talent in support of our mission statement. Please plan to attend. If you have any questions, please see Ms. Juanita Woods or myself, and we express our thanks. On Wednesday, Bible study will continue with Reverend Estes from 5.30 to 7 p.m. We invite all of you to join us for our discussion on stewardship using scriptures from the Gospel of St. Luke and the Book of Acts. Also to the Finance Committee will meet on Sunday, November the 20th and they'll meet via Zoom. Also the Vestry Committee meeting has been rescheduled for Thursday, November 17th. So please make that adjustment in, in your calendar. Manford. I was getting a little feedback here that somebody's birthday is today. That is Manford. More well, Matthew. See? It's when? Wednesday? Okay. Happy birthday. Ah. That concludes our announcements. And, um, I want to welcome all of you again and wish you a happy week. Thank you. Stand for our closing hymn, found in Lift Every Voice, number 12. Come, we that love the Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You may exchange the peace. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Has ever been healed by that name, ever been delivered by that name. Lift up your voice and shout, Jesus. Come on, call that name. Come on, call that name. Call that name. Come on, I need to hear a church call that name. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, what is this one that she put the dark head finally? Jesus, he is the energy of the invisible God. Our Sabbath, our rest, the word made flesh. Jesus.